one day, one day, one day. Okay, fellas, look, look. Here we have it. This is the praying mantis. This is where I'm at. I couldn't do anything with it because I broke my airbrush. I just got the parts in, but I plan to do this one day. So we're going to do this one day. The praying mantis will get done. It will. But for this one day, I have this very old piece of fur. I believe this is fur. The grain on this piece of wood is outstanding. Look at how tight that is. That is minuscule. Super old growth. So it should lathe really well. That's my thought. Even though it's like cedary, furry, falls apart, it should still work really well on the lathe. And you already know what we're making. Yes, it's going to be about that big too, if not smaller. Waxworm! I'm tired of not catching fish. Last weekend, my friend Nick showed me a creek that I have permission now to go to. Scared the crap out of me. And it's full of chubs and weird species like daces that are rainbow colored. I'm hoping to catch some of them, mud shiners, you know? It's like a multi-species, tiny micro-fishing creek thing. There's sheep there, apparently, that will ram you, so kind of nervous about that. They're not pinned up. There's a dog named Chloe. You have to say her name, and then she's cool, apparently. Let's make this wax worm. I gotta cut a piece off of this block. That's the appropriate size, so I can get it on the lathe. And, and I should probably chuck this piece up in a more secure way than just pinning it in. I need one of those chucks that clamp down on a piece of wood from one end. I'm gonna screw it in and then I'll be able to work on it. Right, yeah. That's right. Where's my pokey thing? Where's my pokey thing? I had a pokey, th oh, I was using it to stir silicone, I remember. Pokey thing. A hammer? Yep. Hammer. Yeah, I'll drill an appropriately sized pilot hole Whoa, I tightened things down on this. I don't remember what I last used this for, but my lord, I tightened stuff down on this. Oh, okay. And that's what's gonna hold the piece in. I think I explained it well enough last time. How big is that thread? Quarter inch, okay. Good to know. I'm gonna cut this into quarters. Yep, that'll still fit on there and everything. So the threads are a quarter, so I need to go one or two sizes below that. Let's go, <clears throat> let's go 7 30 seconds. <coughs> that wood's kind of potent. 7 30 seconds. It's a soft wood, so we really want those threads to be grabbing something. Find center. Don't you love it when you drop nice tools? Beautiful handmade tools that somebody made for you, you just drop them on the smith. Don't you love that? Got my hole poked. Now let's get our hole drilled. I'm gonna start with a smaller drill bit. No, I can do this. That was something on the floor that my foot scraped. I didn't fart. Let's measure how deep I need to go, actually. So I'm 0.54. I've already overdone it, so let's just, let us just get this screwed in. Oh, we're not, oh, okay. Oh, I remember how I did this. You have to attach the piece from off of the lathe and hold on to that bolt that I have in there. But wouldn't you know it, I can't find my ratchet set. Bob Saget. There we go. It was in the house. My ratchet set, for some reason, was in the house. Who keeps this there? I have no idea. Me. I do. Uh, come on. Come on now. Seven sixteenths. Come on. Right. Wow, I just, I wasn't paying attention at all. It's just a little crooked, you know? You think that'll work on the lathe? If I just chuck that up and spin it? And... No? I may have, through a stroke of genius, figured out a better way to do this. Just don't want to strip out those threads. That should work much better. And there's a quarter inch bolt holding this little piece of wood. So I should be able to make a worm somewhere in here. A wax worm. That's what we're making today. I know this video started a little weird and all over the place, but we're making a wax worm. It's what you make when you've been desperate to catch a fish for about a month. And you can make fun of me all you want. I don't, I don't care. 
it's a tidbit crooked but when I get the knife to this it's gonna straighten out just fine tidbit I'm sure you've seen a lathe before but if you haven't this is what it's doing it's taking off the corners and it's going to come straight down to a cylindrical piece that I then can work on to make the wax warm you know but I'm going to put as much detail into the body just using the lathe let's get focused here just using the lathe I'm going to put as much detail on the body as I can though with the ridges and the bumps and stuff I have a long ways to go in the drawing the worm is just about a quarter inch thick, so I gotta trim this down about half of its width still. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. That will be the thickness of this body. Now, I'm thinking the best way to do this will be to carve the head on the tip here and start there and then come in and make as many ridges as I want and then have it taper down to a point back here because that's how, that's how they are. Might not do the whole point thing because the tapering down, the tapering down on the butt kind of points down. So I might leave a lot of material and uh, compensate for that somehow. But I'm gonna start with the head and then do the ridges. If I had to redo this, I would make the ridges not so deep. I don't think real wax worms have that like aggressive of ridges along their body, but I'm happy enough with this. And I have a lot of shaping left to do. And I might be able to flatten these quite a bit. I'm gonna sand it more. Also, this might be really good. The clear coat's gonna take away a lot of definition, but because the ridges are so deep, just the color is gonna be darker on the ridges. It might, that might compensate for that. Let's finish carving this out. We'll just find out, won't we? So you can see there's just those little pointy legs in the front. They're pretty round. Some of them are pretty big too. Like this is not out of the question size wise. The ones that you ice fish with are usually pretty small. Whoa. It looks like they turn into a flying thing eventually. Maybe another bait idea. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, can't find a good picture of what I was trying to tell you, so I'll just carve it and show you. So, haven't mentioned at all how I intend to put a hook and hardware and stuff in this thing, but I will eventually. This is going to be difficult to carve. This back section needs to go down to a point. So, first things first, let's get that out of the way. And then wherever this point ends up, pointing down will give it'll establish what side is down on this bait it'll let me know where to carve the legs and stuff so that little point that's down I'm gonna carve a little channel in there and just be really care careful because the grains not helping me at all it's com the completely wrong direction yeah maybe I'll break the files out and stuff too but on the first I think just two segments of this I'm gonna be carving tiny little legs okay, it's gonna be adorable just gonna start with a normal round file. I want a smaller one. There we go. Nope, that's a triangle file. Let's grab the round, there we go. Got the round one. Did you know some people have a phobia of small things? And I think I kind of have that. Like it makes me really uneasy working on stuff this small. It gives me an icky feeling. It's not a fear. It's just a, ugh. Tiny pieces of Legos when I was a kid. I just, it gives me a bad feeling. Now you know my deepest insecurities. Please don't use them against me. And now, for the rest of the segments on this bait, I'm actually going to flatten. This bait's gonna have a bit of a flat bottom. This stuff comes off quick with a big file like this. I am having to be careful. The suspense is immense. Okay, now I want that roundish one. Couldn't find the roundish one, so I settled for this flat one. 
I hope you guys can even see this. This is kind of ridiculously small work. This might be some of the smallest carvings I've ever done on this channel, but I'm trying to get that channel that I made to then on either side of the ridges to come to a point a little bit so it looks like feet. I'm gonna carve on this side and this side of it too, so it's I'm just narrowing every angle where the feet are. I can really tell that made no sense. Sorry, just, just watch what I do. Please, please watch me. Yeah, I'm just going at every angle like a madman now. There's no sense to make of this. Just take the material away from where it needs to be taken away from. I could be a carving professor in a college somewhere, and that is all I would say. Remove the material that needs to be removed. But professor, how do I... Remove the material that needs to be removed. Please, folk. Oh, I almost had it. Okay, perfect. I put it on manual, so it's going to stay there. Can you guys see those legs? That is what I was going for. Just a couple, just four legs, even though there should be six, just four legs right at the front here. A flat belly that I will put weight in, and then this comes off to a point. All this is gonna get sanded and refined. Come on now. That's gonna be a distinguishable wax worm. You're gonna be able to distinguish. I just lost it. Duh. 1111, make a wish. We started this, let's just say we started this like six hours ago. Same day, don't worry. So I, yeah, I woke up at like five this morning. Something crazy like that. We actually started this like 30 minutes ago. So. One day. Do waxworms have eyeballs? Unless those two things are eyeballs, which they don't really look like eyeballs. I don't think waxworms have eyeballs. That just gave me a good idea of what to carve in the head though, which is a bit of a channel running down the middle. Another one of them episodes. Nice close-ups on my dirty fingernails. Some of you are probably disappointed I even just pointed that out, sorry. But it's one of them episodes. Been working on go-karts a lot. Got grease and grime and muck and metal shavings and disgustingness all up in my fingernails right now. And you have a close-up to it, you're welcome. Okie dokie, folks. I'm pretty happy with that carving. It's just like a straight petrified wax worm. As for the hook and weight situation on this bait and what the action back up of this bait's gonna be, it's just gonna be a jig. The line tie is literally going to come out of the center top of this bait and the hook is going to be hanging off the back. And I have some tiny fly tying hooks. I have these in all different sizes, but this is going to work out perfectly. See, that's the back of the bait. I'm going to cut a diagonal slot that's not very deep at all and then super glue and baking soda that hook in there. That's what that's going to look like. This is so difficult to show you. Yes, that, that's what that's going to look like. Man. Let's put the weight in this thing first and then put the hook in last so I don't have a sharp point sticking out of this thing I'm trying to work on. Makes sense. These are 0.125 inch diameter tungsten ball bearings. Eighth of an inch. That's right. This bait's gonna be loaded with tungsten. I think a couple of these. That should keep it how I want it, at least. A couple will. This is such a tiny piece of wood. Gonna put one right here. Sort of in that first segment after the legs. One's, one's gonna go right there and then I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stuff the next one as close as possible to it. That way this bait is just center weighed, the belly falls, and there's a hook off the back. It's just like a little jig. There'll be current in the places I'm fishing this with, so hopefully I can just get this in a nice drop off or something. It falls off the edge, looks like a little grub, and kerchomp, catch fish all day, hopefully. Is that too big? No, that looks good. This is some small stuff. These are sharp snap-on bits too, so I need to Watch what I'm doing. Oh, that did not feel safe at all. That felt some things on my body tightened. Let's just say that. <clears throat> and now I go for round two. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna split this thing in half. This is uncomfortable. Maybe I just want one. Does that sound good, guys? Maybe I just want one of these in there? Or should I be a big boy? and put two in there. Comment down below now. What's the consensus? Two? Yeah, I'm sure it's two. You savages. I mean, look at... It's tungsten. It, this really wants to sit up, right? And I'm going for something kind of finesse, so maybe that's enough. Please? In all reality, that feels like enough. I'm not just scared. I'm sticking with one, and that is not a cop-out. I'm sticking with one because of reasons. I did not have my camera on, but I totally put baking soda on that and covered it in super glue. A little droppy drop. We're dealing with such small amounts that 
that super gluing baking soda is pretty much translucent, but it's in there, it's sealed in. The next thing to do is to cut that lip slot. No, the hook slot, and install that hook. I'll be using this useless little saw to do that. Can you tell I don't like this saw? Sometimes I have to use it though, because it's thin. Like if this was a sharp saw, I would have been the china already. I've been at this for too long. Oh, look at that, I could have used the thick saw. Silly, silly me. I think that is actually going to be perfect. Yes, you can see quite a bit of the hook shank still sticking out of the top of the body, but after the clear coat is on, the clear coat will come right up to that hook shank, I think, and that's gonna be good. It's gonna be a little fish catching monster. It might do all sorts of weird stuff as it comes up and then sinks and weird stuff and sinks and weird stuff. This might be really good. I'm gonna drop some super glue all over this thing now. I'm not even worried about covering up that hook slot because the super glue will. I probably should have checked that that hook was straight when I before I poured the super glue all over it, but it was and I got lucky without even checking and it's, it's very straight. I just kind of realized that the color of this wood is giving me a hardcore waxworm vibe right there. That's, this might not need much paint. Waxworms heads are dark and then they got some dark spots on the tail and stuff, or tail, the legs. Yeah, man, I'm gonna spray some accelerator on this. Let's go paint this. And I just realized we sealed this. We put the hook in, the weight's in, it's all ready to go. We can see how this works. See how a little wax worm works. I mean, you can't really beat that for a fall rate. And then if you're dragging it along. That really does look like a piece of food bouncing around in the water. There's no action to it, but when you're in a creek trying to catch tiny little fish, you don't want to throw a Medusa in there and have all sorts of action and craziness going on. It does, here, let me show you from this angle. I don't know if you can even see that. It doesn't go down perfectly straight. It, it wants to wobble a bit on the fall, which I think anything in water kind of tends to do that. So I'm not telling you anything that's special about this. Let's go paint this. So since my airbrush is not put together, and I'm actually needing a couple more things, we're gonna use a brush. We're gonna paint this thing by hand. So weirdly, the, the color of this thing is disturbingly close. Just right spot on. That old fur wood covered in super glue is the exact same color as a wax worm. All that we have to do is add some darkness towards the head. This really worked out. It's 11.43 right now. It's not even noon and I'm gonna have this thing done and painted and the clear coat on it and that in it in the tank. We're gonna have a lot of time to catch fish, which is good. So for darkness towards the head, I'm gonna start with something kind of fleshy dark and I'm thinking a watered down wicked red oxide. One sec. And then just a really, maybe a detail sapia on the front. Sorry for the noises. They're tearing up my sidewalk now. This entire neighborhood's just falling apart. Sorry, I just, I need to calm down. It's not falling apart. So this is a very red fleshy tone and a lot of it is going to get covered up. I know this doesn't make any sense. It's like, why would you color the head of a waxworm red? I'm just trying to go for some highlights in that first line. The darker color will take over and look a lot more natural. Ooh, I kind of want some red on the belly though. That might be cool, some red on the belly. There's a little detail. It's like a bleeding waxworm. Now it all makes sense, right? That always reminds me of the smell of my grandpa's old garage. I think he had leaky propane torch heads and it always smelled like propane. It takes me back, man. So the raw, raw umber is the greenish. The detail sapia is the brownish, right? Umber is green. I might have that backwards, but I don't care. If you can't really tell a difference, it's like, why does it even matter? I'm gonna slow down with the nihilism there, okay. Let's, everybody calm down. I have a drop of that stuff next to a drop of water I'm mixing it, trying to get the correct consistency. And I happen to notice that yes, this is brown. So the, the sapia is brown. And we're gonna get some of that on the tip and try to fade it into the reddish stuff that we already put on. It's gonna look great, guys. Trust me. 
I can sense the doubt through that camera. Why'd you put red on it? Waxworms aren't red. Sadly, I'm starting to, to agree with the red might have been stupid. But it's not red anymore. Okay. That dried and it looks a lot better. I was right. Let me get a picture up. I might be wrong. Yeah, I was kind of wrong. Here is what we're dealing with now. It definitely screams waxworm, but the head is the incorrect color pattern. The colors are kind of accurate. The red kind of went away. It's just a dark head, but that dark ring behind the head shouldn't even exist. It should just be dark on the tip. Is a fish going to know the difference? Probably, and then we'll fail this challenge, but that is what I will use as an excuse if I don't catch a fish with this today. Wouldn't that be just the most pathetic thing you've ever seen on YouTube? A tiny little wax worm, and I'm in a creek where I saw fish last weekend, like a, a, an absurd amount of chubs. Drop this in, don't get a bite for hours, go home and cry. I'm gonna put a bit more dark color on the tip of this. Yes, the color, no water. Yep, that did it. Can you tell I even did anything? Okay, looking classy. I even got some spots for the legs down there. Time to clear coat. Clear coat. One day, clear coat. Look at that. Look at that little fish snack. Just vibing right there. Look at that. That clear coat did something. You can't see it now, because, and I can't show it to you properly until the clear coat's finished, but you'll see. So that did not take very long at all. There's not very much to have drip off of this, so. End of the tank. The clear coat is set, and this bait right now is just ready to fish, as is. I could go catch a fish with this right now, but I'm gonna do one last thing to it. And before you even ask, yes, this is completely pointless. It's just something I wanna do. I drilled the four smallest holes possible. Now I'm gonna fill them in with little flashy things, and hopefully, that resembles legs. I'm gonna fill one hole at a time and then cut the, well, I already cut a piece right here. Get some glue in one hole. Where's my tweezers? Grab this, put it in there. Just like such as, and give it a spritzy. And it's in there, there's a little leg. Little leg. I'm gonna do that to all four. A completely pointless added detail. But who knows, maybe, you know, those are flashy, so might catch a beam of light and send it right into a chub's eye and just get it going, you know? There's the finished bait, by the way. I'm gonna tie this to my pole. This is a very simple bait, but of the simple ones that I've made so far, might be my favorite. The wax worm in all of its glory. Let's go see what we can do with this thing. This is it. This is it, fellas, right here. Let me show you. I don't want to do drive that dog too crazy. Right down here. This, this little puddle, that's it. I have already spotted some fish. They are small, they look like chubs. Simple fishing right here. Scope some stuff out. I have backup. I I have backup. I know some other small spots like this. I might have spooked them over to this side. Oh, I got a hit. Got a fit. Oh man. First open water fish of the year legitimately caught caught and it's a monster it's official chubs like fake wax worms it's official thank you everybody that made this possible I'd like to thank my son my wife my future kids we caught a chub thank you sheep lucky sheep over there they're probably the reason I caught one. Man, that would have been perfect bait. Go to the pike spot. It's probably it's probably perfect fishing under the road. From there to there, they're probably all right under me. Yep, they're all probably 
15 feet into that tunnel. It's not fair. I'm kind of glad the sheep are penned up. Don't they just look a little feisty? <laughs> There's a waterfall. <laughs> Maybe there's a fish right in there. Oh. They're not pinned up. Hey sheep. I don't remember if the species is darter or a dace that Nick said he caught out of here. Hey kitty. I wonder if she's used to, or he or she is used to people catching fish and giving it to her. Oh, I just scared some fish. Are you an unlucky cat? I'm starting to think that even this tiny little waxworm is too big for this creek. I'm seeing some tiny fish that don't look like chubs. I think in all reality, we're looking for the monster, which is probably a fish this big out of this creek. Scared the crap out of me. By the way, 124. Caught that little chub uh, probably 15 minutes ago, so that was a fast one day. I need to get to a different stream, a little bit bigger. This is a good stream though for micro fishing. One chub, new spot. At the other end of this pond, there's a creek, but this is looking kind of clear. And this little inlet right here might hold some decent fish. This should produce some fish. There was one. Yep. They're nibbling on it down there. It's just kind of hard to tell when to set the hook. There we go. Oh. It is not a different species, but it's a bigger chub. I resorted to laying the line down on the water. And then you can kind of see if a fish takes it because it takes a little bit of line. It's probably what fly fishermen do. Got one. Woo. Three chubs. It's getting real official. <laughs> Three chubs on the wax one. <laughs> I need to go to a trout stream. I think that is all that's in this hole. Allow me to spare you the four hours of trout stream footage. This here is a trout stream. Ah, I don't like trout. With no trout. I fished at that pond too for quite a while. Hey Chip. You guys haven't seen Chip in a while. Look who it is. Chip, Chip, come here. Anyway, video was a success and a failure in a way because that was pretty pathetic. Three chubs, three tiny fish. I wasn't expecting to catch big fish with this bait, but just three little chubs. Spring's coming, fishing will get better. Big fish will bite more often. It'll be easier for me to fool you guys that I'm a good fisherman. Come spring, can't wait. That's it, video's over, successful video. On to the next bait. Yeah, I don't know if you can even see that. Here, let me show you from this angle. Nice close-ups on my dirty fingernails. And weird stuff, and sinks, and weird stuff. I didn't fart. <laughs> I need to calm down, go home and cry. <laughs>